So we looked at the two steps. One is the initialization step, which is what this routine is doing. The initialization ritual, which we do one, which is a 13 step sequence. You can look at all the details here. We talked about it. So this part here is simply making the GPIO pin be a alternate pin and an, in, and an input. So this is saying input. We did the clock, we did the alternate bit, and then we did the select and we enabled it. Now we, the second part is we turn on the clock for the ADC. We wait for a little bit to, for the clock to get going. We set the sampling rate. We set the priority of the sequencer. We disable it and enable it between these two steps. And while we're configuring it, the steps involved are what is the trigger we're using. We're using software as a trigger. We're saying I'm using channel P2, which is A in. And we made sure that the IE0 is set to 1. I have a question, Professor Yerabali. Why did you disable the digital input? Oh, that is correct. In fact, what we did for the de-enable is we turned it off. Yeah, but that why? Is, that is because it's not digital, it's analog. Oh, yes, you're right. All right, so let's take a look at our second routine, which is our routine where we're actually going to read the data. So this is our data read routine. This is when there is a sample and you're ready to read it and you this routine has been called. This routine's responsibility is to tell the ADC module that you're ready to read it, which is our first step. Okay, let's take a look at the read routine. Uh, we've already seen it, so I'm gonna summarize it. We start and once we get the, get, the, get the sampling going, we'll keep checking to see if it is done. So we're gonna check the status bit. And if the status bit says that it's busy, then we keep going back and keep checking it. And eventually it's gonna say it's done. And once it's done, we're gonna read the data and we're gonna clear the bit. So that's exactly what you see here. This is the start. We have a loop here which checks repeatedly checks the status. Then we come out of this, we read the data which is right here in the 543 and the last step is we clear the bit which is right here and we return the result, so we return. All right, should we see if it works? Let's do it. All right. So we have a analog signal connected up to PE2. So to test it, we will use this main program and we will ask the ADD converter to capture the input and store it into this variable. All right, let's go. Build, download, Debug. Let's look at the watch window. And in this watch window, we have the variable that we're going to set every time we sample. So let's hit the Go button. In this watch window, we can see the results of the A to D converter. It's a 12-bit number. So Professor Yaravali, make it go smaller. So I'm sliding the slide part and it's moving it to the right, and I moved it as right as I can. Oh, that's a small number. And it's a small number. Okay, the A to D converter goes from zero to what number does it go to? Well, let's it's see. Ooh, bigger. 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 I'm moving it. Come on, moving faster. It. No, it's not so moving fast. It. Slow it down. There you go. And the largest number is 4,095. There we are, 12-bit converter. Uh, now you try it. 